next talk is towards stream ciphers for efficient FH with low noise ciphertext. Uh, the authors are uh, Patrick Mew, uh, Anthony Jonner, Francois Xavier Stender, and Claude Khaled. And Mew, Patrick, Pierrick, I'm sorry, <laughs> will present. So hi, everyone. Thank you for the presentation. So during this talk, I will first explain what we call efficient FHE, then show how we design a stream cipher effic for efficient FHE, and then present a concrete instance. So first, let's talk about uh, application. We will deal with outsourcing application. So we have a user of nowadays, Alice, which is uh, very connected, and she has a lot of uh, smartphones, smart cards, tablets, and she's on Facebook or Twitter all the time. So she is storing a lot of data, and sometimes she wants to do, to pro to do some processing over her, da her data, but she cannot do it because with all the devices that she uh, owns, there is not enough storage or not enough computational power even to classify some feature, for example. So a way of at least to do this storage is to use a cloud. So we will uh, call this cloud cloud. <laughs> it's a French joke. So cloud is a provider, a provider of huge storage and huge computational power. So this way, Alice will be uh, able to outsource her data and and uh, our computation. But as cryptographer, we know that there is some privacy problem with uh, this kind of conception. Some uh, data of Alice are very sensitive, like uh, medical data, for example. So to, uh, to deal with this problem, there exists fully homomorphic encryption. So this is a kind of encryption where Alice will be able to delegate our data in a way the, that the actual data is not known. She will uh, give encrypted data to Claude. Claude will do all the computation asked by Alice on this encrypted data without knowing the plate text itself. And then Alice will be able to decrypt the function of the data that she asked. So I will first explain what is the first uh, framework of FHE, the theoretical one. So all the, all the boxes, like the gray boxes, uh, where is uh, hank, uh, means uh, that it's an algorithm th of this framework that Alice, uh, Alice or Claude has to evaluate. And the color of these boxes is for the cost of um, if, uh, evaluating this, algori this algorithm. So when it's white, it's something uh, that you can effici effi efficiently do, like symmetric encryption, for example, like AES. And when it's um, gr gray or black, it's difficult to do. So you cannot do it with limited devices, like uh, the devices that uh, Alice uh, has. So first, Alice will encrypt uh, our plain text in a nomomorphic way and send it to Cloud. Then Cloud will, will use an evaluation procedure on, uh, on F. F is the functionality as by Alice. And if F has, a has not a very low degree, Claude will use some uh, very expensive technique, uh, which is called bootstrapping. And, and then it will, it will have a nomomorphic ciphertext of the result. It will compact it in order to uh, make the decryption easier for Alice. So Alice will then do the uh, uh, easy to do decryption and will recover f of m, the target. So this kind of framework is good in theory. You can achieve fully homomorphic encryption this way. But it's not very efficient in, in practice. Bootstrapping is uh, too costly in, uh, in practice, and it's taking too long. So for practical uh, application, we will deal with homomorphic encryption, so only with a limited level for the, for the function. So we are not using bootstrapping anymore, and F has to, uh, needs to have a low degree. And th this framework could be good, but it's not, uh, it's not enough for Alice. Um, Alice has only uh, low devices, so she cannot do a nomomorphic encryption and store very, uh, very big ciphertext. So this way, we will put the phone made by Alice in the side of Cloud. So Alice will uh, only do a symmetric encryption. You can think uh, of uh, AES encryption, for example. And she will send a symmetric ciphertext this way to uh, Cloud. 
and Cloud will, will transform this ciphertext in an homomorphic form. So to do this, he will use extra information of, uh, on, uh, of Alice's secret key, and he will evaluate homomorphically the symmetric decryption, uh, the decryption of the symmetric um, encryption scheme. So he will homomorphically perform AES, for example. And this way, he is obtaining an homomorphic ciphertext of M, and we can follow the framework as before. So now we can see that for Alice, everything is low cost. She can do everything with low devices. So all the performance of uh, this hybrid framework is dep depending on the symmetric encryption scheme that we use and how we can efficiently evaluate it. And uh, that's what we want to solve, to have something very cheap to uh, evaluate homomorphically. So design a symmetric cipher that we can uh, efficiently uh, homomorphically evaluate. So to see what is efficient, the notion that we have to take care is first about the computational cost. So it will uh, merely depend on the number of multiplication of the uh, symmetric decryption. And then we have to take care about the noise increase, because for homo fully homomorphic encryption scheme, we are using noise-based cryptography, where, the, uh, where in the ciphertext, the plain text is hidden with a small quantity of noise when it is freshly generated. And doing the homomorphic operation, the noise is slowly increasing. So first, we will have freshly encrypted ciphertext, which are in uh, forest green. And when we are performing more and more operation, it will turn into yellow and uh, into orange. And it will mostly depend on the multiplicative depth. Higher is the multiplicative depth, higher is the noise in the ciphertext. So there were different attempts to, have the, to evaluate uh, efficiently symmetric encryption scheme. So to see how, the, how they behave, let's think that you have an internal state of your of your uh, symmetric construction, where it will be the key or the IV, for example, and you want to see it in the homomorphic point of view. So you have no bits anymore, but all, uh, all of these um, rectangles are ciphertext, encryption of zero or one. So they are freshly encrypted, and you want to see how the noise behave into the ciphertext du during the encryption. So first, if you have a look on block cipher, at, uh, at each one, you are performing one function in uh, the, same fun the same function on all your ciphertext. So the, uh, the noise into each ciphertext will, uh, will blow with, uh, with the same manner. So from room to room, you are uh, updating the ciphertext from the precedent room. And this way, in uh, all your state, all the ciphertext has the same noise. So we are speaking about uh, a constant magnitude of noise. But this noise will be uh, high because you have uh, you cannot do only one round. You have uh, you have more rounds to do, so you have to apply the function a certain number of times. So you cannot have a very very low uh, low noise. So and this uh, evaluation on block cipher was done for, uh, on AES and uh, on a lot of work with the last uh, who was a low MC presented in Eurocrypt last year. And now, if we, uh, if we try to see it with Scream Cypher, it's slightly different. So we still have a, an internal state, and we will consider that at each time, we are updating it by computing one ciphertext from all the register, and put, uh, so with uh, one function with a low degree, and then we push it into the register. And we will compute the next one from the new register. So this way, we will we'll do sequential number of updates for all the initialization time before outputting ciphertext. And after this moment, we output ciphertext until, uh, until the end of a phase where all, where all the registers have too much noise to produce uh, clean enough ciphertext. So that's to say that only at time f you can output the first ciphertext for symmetric reason, and then at time F plus R, you are not able to produce more ciphertext because w what you will produce is already orange, so you cannot use it without bootstrapping anymore. So this way, the noise is slowly incre increasing in the register, so you will have uh, some, uh, some ciphertext with low noise and less low noise until not, user not usable noise. So this way, 
uh, you have a slowly increasing noise and a limited number of, of, it, uh, of output, and after you have to redo all the process. And that was done in Trivium and Crevium. So now for our construction, we which is the best of both worlds, so to have something cons to have an amount of noise which is constant, whatever the number of bits that you want, like for block cipher, and we uh, we have a low noise, like for the first uh, the first cipher text that we, uh, you obtain with uh, with the stream cipher. So that's what we uh, we obtain uh, with the fa a new family of stream cipher that we call filter permutator, and then we are the first to use the third generation of FHE to evaluate this kind of uh, symmetric, uh, symmetric homomorphic construction. And uh, that's what uh, lead uh, the design of our concrete instantiation that we called Flip. So first for the filter permutator, imagine that you want to update your register in a way that there is no extra noise each time. So you want to do a zero noise operation on the register. So this way you can, you can do this zero noise operation and uh, extract one, uh, one ciphertext, so apply F to all the register, have a ciphertext, and don't push it into the register anymore. You already have uh, an updating on the register, so you don't need to push it again. So you have no initialization, and so on and so forth. You can produce a uh, as many ciphertexts as you want, with, uh, which are very low noise. And this way, you have a constant and low noise ciphertext. So so more concretely, this zero noise uh, homomorphic operation is only a, a permutation. So it's like uh, having, um, having a public permutation, see, which is uh, only a wire crossing. So you apply your wire crossing to, uh, to your key register. So you are just rearranging the bits and uh, the ciphertext in the homomorphic case. And then you are applying a filtering function to your, uh, to your rearranged key. And that is giving your key stream. And that's why uh, you are never um, getting a, a bigger noise. So more concretely, for the instance uh, that we gave, flip, the components are uh, an AES-based PRNG, uh, uh, the Knut shuffle for uh, the generation of permutation. It's a way for Alice to uh, don't have to store a lot of wire cross permutation, but only uh, uh, a seed for the PRNG, which is giving all the permutations after. And we, uh, and we used uh, a filtering function, which is very different than uh, previous construction on Boolean function. So I describe it now. Um, this function has four parameters, N1, N2, and L triangle H. So N1 is for, uh, is for a part, uh, a linear part of N1 variable n2 for uh, a quadratic part of n2 variables, and n2 over two monomials, which are acting on uh, independent uh, variables. And the triangle part, uh, what, we um, what we call a triangle, it's um, a direct sum of monomial from degree one to degree h, with h the high of the triangle. And, this, and um, then we are using L triangles of this shape. So all the, uh, all the um, variables here are independent, and we are adding it uh, during dir uh, direct sum. And this way, we can propose some, uh, some uh, concrete uh, instantiation for uh, a security of 80 bits and a security of 128 bits. So to explain why we are using this function, uh, it's, more, it's to have a very low error growth using the third generation. So first I present a little the first generation, the third generation of FHE that was presented in GSW paper. So let's assume that you have a matrix C, which is a ciphertext, with uh, this relation, that there exists uh, some, uh, some key S and plain text mu and a, a small error E, such that SC equal mu S plus C. You can see S then, uh, as an approximate eigenvector and U as an approximate eigenvalue. And this way, when you will add uh, ciphertext or multiply ciphertext, you can uh, have the same result with uh, the uh, eigenvalues. That's uh, how you get homomorphism. And this scheme uh, is by, uh, as a security based on a standard uh, LWE. So let's talk about uh, the error growth of uh, the uh, usual operation with this third generation. 
So the um, error part of the ciphertext is the vector E, and uh, we will look on the variant of, um, of the element of this vector. So for an, uh, for an addition, the variant will be uh, only the sum of the variants of the ciphertext that we use. And for the multiplication, uh, the behavior is uh, quite different from second generation, or uh, where uh, it was mostly depending on the depth or the tree when you put all the ciphertext. Now, what is better, with, uh, there is an asymmetric error growth. So depending on the order of the ciphertext, your error growth will be better or worse. So this way, if you have only very freshly encrypted ciphertext, and if you are doing a long or a long homomorphic chain, you can have a, you can have a quasi additive error growth. That is, that is uh, y times uh, sigma square to, uh, to k, k being the number of ciphertext, and uh, y being uh, a um, constant depending on the size of the ciphertext that you use. So as this uh, multiplication is uh, quasi-additive, it will be very useful to have uh, this kind of uh, long homomorphic chain. And that's how uh, the function f was built. So to see why we use that, we can prove that uh, evaluating the function f is not adding more, uh, more noise than uh, doing one homomorphic chain of multiplication. And to have the intuition, if you uh, look on one triangle, so the addition of ciphertext, so from one ciphertext to ciphertext three and uh, etc., you will uh, using the um, multiplicative property. You are you have uh, y sigma two times one two and etc. until h, and you can just verify that evaluating one triangle is exactly giving the same nodes as I'm doing a multiplication of k, k ciphertext and one uh, triangle. Um, as only k, k, k ciphertext inside. So uh, the better that we can, uh, that we can, uh, it's a better way to have a function f, uh, which is um, well done for third generation. And if you, uh, we want to study f on a, on a symmetric point of view, which kind of security we can have with a symmetric scheme, uh, not uh, homomorphically evaluated. So first, We'll, uh, we will imagine that the permutation behave uh, as random permutation, if the pure NG and the shuffle are good enough. And we will mostly focus on the security of the function f. So uh, we, can, uh, we can see a lot of um, attacks on filtering functions that were used in the, the past decade. So algebraic attack, correlation attack, and a guess and determinant attack, as shown to us by uh, Duval, Lallemand, and Rotella. And for all, the, all of these attacks, we can, uh, we can see the robustness and, uh, of, the, of the function using standard criteria, that is uh, the algebraic immunity, the resiliency, and the non-linearity, non for example. And with all these criteria, we can, uh, we can determine how robust is our function, and uh, then we can, uh, we can proof all, the criteria, all these criteria on F and show that uh, it reaches the security of our 80 or the security of 128. And uh, one example is that we can prove that uh, a triangular function has an exact uh, immuni algebraic immunity of k, whereas the first triangle function has only k monomials uh, in, uh, in its uh, a in f. So now let's talk about performances. So we did some experimental tests to see uh, with, um, ring, uh, with ring JSW if the error growth of flip was uh, as nice as we uh, s theoretically thought. So we uh, did a lot of computation and we saw the, uh, the error growth meeting the error in the, um, in the um, vector of error of each uh, ciphertext E. And uh, we are comparing freshly encrypted ciphertext with a ciphertext obtained by multiplying two fresh ciphertext, and then a ciphertext uh, obtained by using flip, so uh, long multiplication of, uh, of ciphertext. And what is important on this table is that we can see that an evaluation of flip is, uh, is, uh, um, is not uh, more expensive than doing a multiplication. Um, 
here you can see 25 uh, you can see 25% uh, or 31 for example whereas the multiplication is only into two ciphertexts whereas flip is using a lot more than two ciphertexts multiplying uh, in each uh, with each other and uh, the percentage is the um, the percentage is the homomorphic capacity that we have it's uh, the um, the potential function, the potential functionality that you can still do with uh, this ciphertext. So all the multiplication or addition that Alice can ask to Claude to do, and not only what we uh, were able to do for the decryption of the symmetric encryption algorithm. And if we want to compare to previous work, uh, on a theoretical point of view, uh, for the error increase, all previous works were done with uh, the second generation of FHE, where it was totally determined by the multiplicative depth. And if we are looking on our multiplicative depth, we are reaching a multiplicative depth of four, whereas all the other were, were um, greater than 12. So it's, uh, it's a big step, you can see. And for the timing comparison, we did some implementation using the uh, HE library. So uh, with HE library, we, uh, we designed the, um, the homomorphic capacity that we want to let to our ciphertext, which is uh, the L plus seven column. It means that we want uh, L level to do the, uh, the symmetric decryption, and then seven levels for the application of Alice. And uh, with this way of comparing the works, we can see that we are always better for the latency, for the 80-bit 80, uh, 80 version of security and the 128. And for the throughput, our uh, version of 80 bits is, um, is the best. But uh, when uh, we, uh, for the um, 128 uh, se security version, we are twice lower than low MC, and we are comparable to Crivium. Uh, for this case, we are using uh, a lot of ciphertext, a lot of multiplication, so without optimization, we are not as good uh, as other construction. So now to conclude, uh, the filter permutator is a new uh, family of uh, stream cipher, which is very designed and adapted to FHE, and uh, some uh, open problems are arising with this construction. For example, can we, uh, can we really reduce the degree of, uh, of a function, like uh, our function f of degree uh, 9 or 16, and still have something secure? So can we do it uh, increasing the key size our, uh, in our construction? And then um, what are the impact of some tweaks on the filter permutator? For example, we saw that we, if we had a whitening before or after the permutation, it's like randomizing the key and the, anal the analyze uh, is, um, is more difficult to see with that. And uh, another way of um, having uh, an important tweak, it's to sort parallel instantiation of the filter permutator. So not uh, using only one F, but Parallel, parallel function f, and this way we are kind of randomizing the function, and uh, it's, uh, it's very difficult to estimate the security of this construction. And then for the concrete instantiation, flip, uh, it has an optimal noise for the third generation. We have only one level of multiplication. It seems difficult to have uh, less. And uh, we can reach an efficient, uh, an efficient FHE framework. That's to say that the homomorphic capacity that we are letting uh, after using flip is still huge. We can do a lot. Our multiplicative depth is only four, which, uh, which seems very slow, and which enables to do a lot of functionalities. And um, the choice of the function on flip are letting new open problems on Boolean function. For, for example, can we, refine the, can we refine the security analysis? We use a lot of uh, standard criteria, but uh, our function is not standard. We are using um, only f a few number of monomials, whereas a random function of this size has a lot more of monomials. And we are using a function only on a constant weight inputs, whereas, whereas all the criteria use the function uh, using all these entries. So can we still use the standard criteria to uh, mid, uh, to measure um, how good is a function, or can we, can we do better and something not that standard? 
So thank you for, uh, for your attention. Are there any questions or comments? Thanks for your talk. Um, I have a question on your latency comparison, just a slide before. This one? Yeah. So uh, for how many bits do you measure this latency here? Um, can you repeat? Uh, so you, you give latency in terms of seconds. Um, what, what do you measure here? How many, do you measure a single bit output here? Uh, so, for the latent, um, with HLE there is uh, there is some uh, some batching. So the time that we have and the number of bits is depending on how they are batching with the parameters that we ask. So Flip normally is uh, working with one bit at a time, but this way this number has made with a lot of bits implemented in a. Uh, in the same ciphertext. So if it's the all the algorithms with the same batching or, or are they different? Um, can you repeat? I'm sorry. I'm just wondering whether this latency, latency comparison makes sense. I mean, how can you how can you put them next to each other? when it depends on this batching parameter and you, you, you're not giving it here. Is it, is it the same batching for all the algorithms? Uh, for all the algorithms, yeah. we, are, we are using uh, the, the same, uh, the we are comparing with the same way, uh, with HLib, saying that uh, the, the depth of the three, the uh, multiplicative de depth that we want, and then HLib is, uh, is giving the parameter to doing it. So, yeah. Okay, yeah, well, let's take it off then. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, uh, thanks to the speaker again. Don't forget, 7.30, <laughs> we start 